Hi folks, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is hopefully going to be the final testing or test of the Straight Tracker prototype. And what I'm hoping to do with this is harvest a single branch off of a sycamore tree and create a bow drill set and the feathers to make the nest and start a fire using one branch and one knife. I think it'll be an interesting challenge in itself but what's going to make it more interesting is that as usual in Scotland it's been pouring with rain. It's not physically raining right now but the sky is looking a little bit overcast and I don't know how long it'll stay dry. Hopefully long enough to get the test done but we shall see. And the midges are out as well as it seems. So I'm actually going to take you with me today. Um, I've dressed for the occasion, it's not out of my workshop in my work clothes doing a quick video. I've actually got outdoor clothes on to go walk and do this challenge. Let me show you these because it's unusual. I've got my kilt on for today. Uh, it's Braveheart tartan, it's not my own tartan, it's a Braveheart tartan. I've got a modified admin pouch which I use as a spawden for this. It just keeps my little bushcrafty items like my bow drill adapter and stuff like that in there. I've got the tracker, I've got a spare pair of glasses in case I lose these ones. And I've got the camera. So I'm going to turn the camera around, we'll go walk up through the woods, then we'll get this branch, come back to camp and get on with the challenge. Let's go. Oh, very overgrown. Oh, excuse me. The voices went a bit hoarse there. So I went very overgrown. Full of thistles, brambles, nettles, all the stuff you want to see when you're wearing a kilt. see some branches on a sycamore way over there but oh my goodness it is a bit of a journey to get there and I'd rather not get my bits stung, jagged or otherwise shredded on thorns Just have a look to see if there's anything closer to Because <laughs> uh, it's getting a bit intense with all these. Look at this. 
I don't want them going up this kilt at all. That's been getting a bit of the action as well. My goodness. Let's have some hawthorn while we're at it. Oh my goodness me. Excuse me. I had the parang on my hippo belt. Yeah, I've just been. <laughs> yeah, that nips. I just had a east thing in there. I'll take a dive up the kilt there. So that's uh, reminded me that I'm alive in no uncertain terms. Might have to get my wife to rub some calamine lotion onto the infected parts later on. That might be worth getting stung for. <laughs> that me. Oh my goodness. I feel like a pioneer. You can see dead dead branches on there. That's what I'm wanting. But it's just a sea of brambles between here and there. No. I don't think that's going to be much fun getting through there actually. Let's turn around and see if I can find a different way through. Not one way there. There used to be paths around here. Oh my goodness me. Get off. Whose idea was this? Right. Oh my goodness, as you saw up there, I just got my butt handed to me by the, the vegetation up there. It's full of massive brambles, everything with jaggies on it, thistles, just <laughs> nettles the lot. I've got stings all the way up inside my legs, say no more, underneath this kilt. Um, so that area up there was where I know that there was sycamore with dead branches on it. I'm going to have to go for a look now and see what else I can find. Hopefully I will. I can see sycamore, but I just kind of get it. So I'm going to try a different route, see if I can get in round the back. And uh, hands are all stung as well. And see what happens. So I'll turn you around. We'll get going again. So here we are. It's like a jungle here, full of thorns, stabbies and everything. But I finally made it to a sycamore tree that has got these pie balls. Look at that, the whole trunk. I like it. Those are the branches I want there, or one of them. So I'm going to get the camera set up and see if I can climb up there, stand on that part, uh, and saw that branch off using the knife. What a sag it's been to get here. Right, here we go. Right.
This is interesting, sawdust in the eye and hanging on the branch you're cutting on doesn't seem the most sensible thing. Happy days. Come back for that one another day. I can feel wet on my legs and I'm hoping it's water off the leaves and not blood running down them off the kind of scratch, scratches and gouges I've got. Right. Come back down. Right, I have the prize at last. So I'm going to make my way back to the camp. I'm going to get that coffee and uh, I'll see you there ready to start producing the bow drill set. Catch you there. Well, that was a bit of a saga. I thought it was going to take me maybe 20 minutes, half an hour to get to those sycamore trees, harvest a branch and get back here. Well, the wind's picking up. I'm being bombarded by beech mast as well. Hope it doesn't land in my coffee. <laughs> anyway, so I thought it was going to take, as I say, within 20 minutes and half an hour. That was two and a half hours that took me to get out there through all those brambles and everything. My legs are scratched to bits, other bits are stung. <laughs> anyway, so I'm back here, I've got my coffee and chocolate. So, once I've finished this, I'm going to get back over the stump and uh, get going with the bow drill set. So, uh, yeah, let's hope this works. It's been a bit of an effort actually gathering the materials. So I hope the thing goes well. Normally I'm not bad with the sycamore, I have to, I have to say. And I, some of you might be wondering why I went to all the effort to actually get a piece of sycamore. The reason is that of the woods that you can make a bow drill set with, sycamore is on the upper half of between easy and hard. There's only about four or so species, including pine, sweet chestnut, beech, oak, and that kind of stuff. It's harder. And so my, my theory is that if I can keep going with sycamore, then the woods that are actually easier will be no problem and there's only a few that are harder to do it with and having the knowledge that I can do it with sycamore gives me that hopefully an edge in thinking that with a bit more perseverance I should hopefully get you know an ember with one of the, the harder species so that's why there is ivy just further down there but ivy is one of the easiest ones and I don't I don't see the point in doing that it's not a challenge so, hence the reason for the second one. Anyway, I'm going to finish this and I'll be back over at the, the stump that I've got there to get the bojo set made. I'll see you there. Right, I'm back. I've had my coffee, had a bit of chocolate, feeling better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut two sections off of this, this branch that I harvested there. Using the gouge test, it seems to be about right. You can, it's maybe a bit soft, but you should be able to gouge it with your nail, mark it with your nail, but not dig chunks out of it. Um, this seems a little bit softer than I would have liked, but we'll give it a go. After going through the rigmarole of getting it, this is what I've got. So I'm going to cut a section for the hearth, probably here, I would say, because this was down near the, this is where I've sewn it off, or where I've sewn it off. So this will be dry, drier than the other end, which is quite punky. You can see it sort of gouges. Um, in places. So this is the section I want to use. I'm going to cut a section to use as the hearth and then a section to use to whittle down to use as the drill. 
So that's the first thing I'm going to do. First bit, that'll be my heart. It's a bit long, but I'm going to shave it down at one side. I'm going to use this section here. That's actually very straight. I'm going to use that for my drill. This piece I'm going to split and use to make feathers. And there's a big knot here, I'm going to chop it there. Oh. <laughs> right. Interesting that technique might use. Hmm. Let me try that and see what happens for creating the heart. Oh. Maybe this doesn't work this time. Oh, here we go. Actually, okay. Well, that was interesting. Very interesting. Cool. This is the thicker bit. I'll use this for my heart. Okie dokie. Right. Ah. 
I want to save these because they're obviously going to be pretty close to dry. I take them down onto a log. Don't want to get my kilt dirty, yeah? Right. Not getting, not getting very long feathers off of that. Hmm. Let's see what happens here. That's more like it. They're quite good. These I'm going to save and hang up on my um, paracord line there just to help dry them out a bit while I go through the rest of this. What should I do here? Yeah. Lay them there for just now. Righty. Yeah, you can feel they're all damp. So I'm going to get these tied off as a bundle. Let them dry out. Some good ones here. Right. I'm going to get these tied up as well.
Okay, let's hope they dry out. Okay, next I'm going to do my hearth. There we go, happy with that. By the way, when you're chopping, if you start down the bottom here and do a series of small chop cuts up and then come down the way again, what happens is it clears it all off but it doesn't allow any wild grain to run off because you've already got stop cuts effectively in the piece of wood. Hence the reason, chop up, clear off. Okay. I'm just squaring this off a little bit. There we go, pretty happy with that. Right, I'm going to leave that up and I'm going to carve the drill next. This piece. Nicely spouted. Probably made a nice spoon. However, don't need a spoon. I need a fire. this is long but the reason for that is that I'm using this on a wet stump and the potential of moisture getting absorbed in by either end is there and I don't want that if I if I want the bow drill to heat up properly or quickly or the spindle to heat up so this is allowing me to trim that off with the length that I have here So that's getting on for round. And that's about the diameter that I'm looking for, which is just about an inch. I like that. There we go.
Okay, pretty happy with that. Okay, we have the point. Now for the spindle at this end. Okay, so we've got our spindle now, that will then fit in there and give me friction free rotation. Next thing, get the half notch board out. I want to set that in. So the centre of the spindle, or the spindle, is lined up somewhere round about the edge, maybe just inside. About here, about that distance in, I'm moving it a little bit further away from the edge. Oh, do I want that? Yeah, okay, I'm going to go there. Put it there, so put that in there. Now the pressure is mostly downward with a little bit of rotation because you don't want to slip and catch your hand. The reason I'm turning it two directions is to cut across the grain and shave it rather than split it. There we go, can you see that? Take that out. That is going to sit there. Like so. Okay, next thing is to burn the spin or burn the socket in. So I'll need to get a, a drill a bow set up to do that. I'll turn the camera around or shift position. Okay, so to burn it in, I need a bow. Here's one that I made previously, or I've used previously as well, but I've been using it as a fire poker since. And I've got a piece of paracord with a loop in the end. Put that on there. Pull it tight. So I've made a, a ring around it that the paracord sits in with a slot and a notch in the end that pulls round and down through 
and then into a split that I've created in the other end. Now, a lot of people, when they do their bows, they make the string very tight. That can be a problem, depending on the diameter of your spindle or your drill, it can be a nightmare to try and get it in. So, leave it a little bit slack. Then, tighten up the other end, or use the remaining rope, cordage, to lash the other end. Hear me. <laughs> And hope you've got the tension right on the cord. There we go. Right. It's getting a little bit kind of ropey with the weather here. Seems okay. Get that down where you can see it. Ah, hang on a second. I'm going to have to unclip my sheath from. Here. I drew the knife because I was going to do it with the bare blade, but I won't for this video. I'm going to keep it in there. Right. Let's get this tensioned up again. Okay. You see that? Yep. Okay. Let's get this burnt in. Because you're burning in, you're just looking for a steady speed. Not looking for massive amounts of speed or pressure okay now it's really important that you don't let the bottom of your drill touch anything damp from now on. And sit up there on the grill, on the uh, board. I'm going to save that dust because everything's wet. It's important you save everything that you've got. Ordinarily, you'd have to chop that out with a knife, um, paring out a pie shape. I have found that a slightly different shape using a saw can generate a really good ember, at least in practice so far. So I'm going I'm to attempt that again today and see what happens. So I'm just going to put that there. That'll save it falling off and potentially hitting anything down.
Right, I'll just explain my notch. Don't know if you even saw that actually. I should have homed in, I should have focused in. However, there we go. So the notch itself isn't pie shaped. It sort of curves back out again on itself. And so it's like a C. So my theory on that is that it helps hold the dust in there. You've got a little channel at the bottom here for air to get through to it. Builds up there, builds up quite a big chunk and then spills out. So this, should, this in my experience, has generated quite a sizable ember. We'll see if it works again today. Right. Ah. I have got a little bit of leather for catching the ember on and I have left it in the workshop. So give me two seconds and I'm gonna go and get that. Right, I'm back. Here's this little leather off cut. See that? Yep. Okay. It's starting to spit. So I'm feeling a bit of urgency about catching this because I don't want it to start raining and wet those feathers that I made earlier and are hanging up. Okie dokie folks, here we go, make sure that's exactly right. That squeaking is damp, it's got an infra drill even now. Steady pressure, don't speed it up yet. You wait until the smoke goes yellow, thickens up round about the spindle. And I want a lot of dust. Starting to spill out the groove now. Again, don't let the tip of the drill touch the ground yes okay Ooh, that's getting a bit windy So while that, oh, gee, me. you see that beach mass pounding down? I don't need a piece of that hitting it. While that's consolidating, I'm going to get my feathers. Just a small amount. Let me just get some sticks down onto fire. Right, there's a bed for that. Okay. It's getting to quite a good coal in there. 
let's get that into this nest. Oh. Wish I had more feathers. Let's see if I can raise this up a little bit. So. Try to catch on camera. Oh, that's getting hot. Right. Let's see if you can see that. Get some of this, these chips. Oh, I don't believe this. Well, obviously a bit disappointed that I didn't manage to get that into a fire. Got it lit though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull some more feathers and then have a second go. So the drill is still there. It st should still be dry. And I'm going to make a second ember and see if I can get a fire off of that one. So I'm also going to split up some of these smaller pieces of sycamore and uh, make some fine, fine sticks. That was the mistake I made, I think. I didn't have fine enough uh, small fuel to, to start it or tinder. There we go. So I'm going to split up some of this, make some fine bits, get some more feathers pulled and then I'll... I'll uh, Get another ember done. I think I just went tried to go a little bit too fast. Due to feeling the spits of rain on me. And that was my error. I didn't prepare properly. And that was the result. No fire. So it goes back to the old saying that I learned in the army, or should, well, I say learnt, but obviously didn't go by it there. Proper planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. Right, my screen's playing up again, so I'm not turning it around, I'm just doing it this way, but you can see I've got the small pieces that are split there, I've got some feathers pulled out, I've got some bigger pieces there <coughs> excuse me and that's about as far as I'm gonna go I just really want to see if I can get a fire going with this I don't want to build a proper blaze so here we go I'm gonna put you down now and have a go at the bow drill again is that you in position can you see there 
Yeah. Right. Bit of leather. A wedge under there. Again. Set it up, get stable. <laughs> Here we go again. Let's hope it goes as well this time. Right, my screen's playing up again, so I'm not turning it around, I'm just doing it this way, but you can see I've got the small pieces that are split there, I've got some feathers pulled out, I've got some bigger pieces there, <coughs> excuse me, and that's about as far as I'm going to go, I just really want to see if I can get a fire going with this, I don't want to build a proper blaze. So, here we go, I'm going to put you down now and have a go at the bow drill again. Is that you in position? Can you see there? Yeah. Right. Bit of leather. A wedge under there. Again. Set it up, get stable. <laughs> Here we go again. Let's hope it goes as well this time. Okie dokie. Put these back in my pouch before I end up losing it. The wind's getting a bit stronger, but that's it coalesced into a coal. Oh. Oh. Right. Oh, that was touching my finger. Oh, that's a bit hot. I'm trying to get this in the camera, crouching down. Can you see that? Difficult to get this on camera.
fire again. Great. Small sticks. Everything's a bit damp. Whew. <laughs> yeah, feel good about that. As you can see by the smoke, fire's still going. So that's it. I wanted to try and create fire from one branch with a single knife doing everything. And as you've witnessed, it didn't exactly go according to plan with harvesting the actual branch itself or even with the bow drill. It just goes to prove, as I said at the time, proper planning and preparation makes all the difference. So there we go. That's the end of it. I think this has passed the test. It's now going to be available to purchase if you like this version. Get in touch via my email address. I'll put in the description for the video, but it's info at originknives.co.uk. And that's it. So thank you very much for sticking with me through this whole video. And I'll see you in the next one.